Yep. Audacity in three, two, one. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Barbell Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Lynn, and I'm here with my co-host, Marissa Roy. And in today's episode, we are going to be discussing my birth story, and then also just touching on postpartum expectations. Yes, I'm excited to hear all of this, because this will actually be the first time that I get to hear it too. So it'll be a surprise for everybody. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I think just kind of like you know, obviously a lot of people want to hear the birth story from you and, uh, just been getting a lot of good feedback on that, or at least I've heard from you that you have. So, uh, obviously sharing that, but especially for the new moms out there, even not so new moms, like I think, especially as fitness professionals, we kind of have uh, almost like a duty in a sense to like help other moms, like realize, like, you don't need to feel rushed. You don't need to feel like you have to get back to your old body, like ASAP and just really realizing like, what is the priority after this whole crazy thing called having a baby? Yes. <laughs> um, and so this is definitely as a first time mom. So I, this is only my first pregnancy, first delivery, and I guess I want to say before we jump into everything, I just want to say that like, this is my experience and every mom has their own unique experience and story to tell. So my narrative is not like better or worse than someone else's. I'm not here to try to, I don't know, be like superior or anything like that. I'm just trying to share my story and it's extremely intimate. And my husband was a little apprehensive in the beginning of like, you know, why do you want to share this? This is really intimate. And the reason I want to share and talk about my experience is because when I was pregnant, I found it extremely helpful and like maybe even comforting to read other people's birth stories when I was pregnant. And it was something that I just, if someone had delivered, I probably would have skipped over a couple of years ago. But the, like when I was pregnant, I was like, wow, this is so helpful. I feel like I learned a lot and just everyone's experience can go in so many different directions. So that's the reason I wanted to share. And at the end of all this, if you have any questions or you want to reach out or talk to me about anything, I'm more than happy to, to talk to you. If you have, you know, whatever questions, concerns, whatever it might be to talk to you. Um, but that's kind of why I wanted to get this out there and share my story. I love it. Let's do it. All right. So, um, before getting pregnant, I didn't know if I wanted children. That was like a big thing. I always went back and forth on and it was something I, we related on too. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I, I just, I think because you and I are both so similar and like, I value my freedom and independence so, so much. And just being able to like leave the house whenever I want to, even though I don't because I work from home, but just, you know, just little things like that. And I don't know. I just, I, I just didn't know if I wanted that. Um, and on top of all that, not even knowing if I wanted to have kids, I never in a million years expected to want a natural birth. It absolutely terrified me. Like I, oh gosh, I was like, oh, I'm always going to, I'm hundred percent going to have an epidural, like, you know, but the more and more that I researched the benefits and I found accounts like the pain-free birth, like I started to just kind of gravitate more and more in that direction. So I started to believe that I could do it. And I had friends that I had delivered naturally. So that's kind of the route that I wanted to go in, which crazy. If <laughs> you had talked to me about that a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, so I downloaded, uh, or I, I guess I paid for this course. It's pain-free birth. And it was like all these different modules and it was going through basically just like all the different stages of pregnancy and labor. And I just really learned so much, I, a lot more actually than I learned even from our pre and postnatal course, which was uh, overall, it was just like very helpful and very different types of information. But um, so our due date was March 3rd and I expected to go all the way until like mid-March at the rate or lack of rate that I was progressing. Um, so we had our 39 week appointment on, I guess it was Friday, the February 25th. And our provider asked if I wanted to have a cervical exam performed. And that was my first one at 39 weeks. I had to climb them all the weeks past because I just knew I wasn't progressing. <laughs> it's like, no. And so she checked and I was maybe only one centimeter dilated. 
and I was still extremely high and tight and there's just absolutely no signs of labor. So our doctor was like, well, you still have a ways away until we hear, you know, you're having this baby. So, Boy. yeah. So I was telling, um, I was telling Mariah and she was like, oh, same thing with me. Like they said, no signs of baby. And I went into labor that night and <laughs> I had posted my 39 week picture compared to 38 and everyone was like, you dropped, like you dropped, your baby's dropped. Like, and my friend, um, Brandy, she was so funny. She was like, I give you till Monday. <laughs> she and I was like, I was like, that's in two days. There's no way. Um, so on Sunday, the 27th, um, I woke up super early, like bright at bright and early at four 30 in the morning. And I was just like extremely alert and like very awake and I couldn't go back to sleep. And I like looked outside and it was dark. And I was like, Oh my gosh. I was like, it must be like two in the morning. I checked my phone and it was four 30 and I was like, eh, you know, it's, it's not that early. I was like, I'm just going to get up. So I was doing all this work and I was getting stuff done around the house. And it was just like very abnormal for me. <laughs> like When I was pregnant, I was sleeping in as much as possible. Like I'd sleep in until like seven, eight o'clock even. So I just didn't really think anything of it. I was just like, that's weird. Um, and then we just went about our day and, uh, my husband wanted to go take our family on like a little walk and I just, you know, didn't think anything of it. And we grabbed Sadie, our dog, and we were going through kind of like the dirt areas of our neighborhood, like the back roads. And I would take Sadie on 30 minute walks every single day, like during my pregnancy. So I just didn't think it was going to be an issue, but like maybe halfway into the walk, I just kept telling my husband, I was like, things just really feel different. And I was like, maybe it's because I'm walking on uneven ground or like, I don't, I don't know. I'm like walking in the dirt and I'm not used to walking on, like I'm used to walking on the sidewalk. Um, but I had to take it really slow. <laughs> like, and I, I would look over at him. I'm like, I'm sorry, this is such a boring walk because <laughs> I was literally just like waddling and <laughs> Uh, we just had to take it like really slow. And it took us 50 minutes to go two miles. Um, I had to stop a few times. Like I, I, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, I just feel weird. And I was like, I don't know what it is. So we made it home. Finally, he kept saying, do you need me to go get the truck? And I was like, no, I'm okay. Um, so yeah, we got home and I still felt off. I just didn't really know what it was or think anything of it. Um, I made us dinner and we were just like sitting there relaxing on the couch. And then it was like eight 30 at night. And I looked at uh, my husband and I was like, I really want cookies. <laughs> he was like, do we have any? I was like, no. So then he like looked back and I was like in the kitchen and I was like whipping up homemade cookies. <laughs> and, um, so I baked us some cookies. And, um, at one point, um, I remember kind of like leaning over the counter and I just had so much pelvic pressure. And I think part of me, like, again, I just didn't think it was labor because everyone was like, oh, labor feels like really intense menstrual cramps. So I was like, I'm just having pressure. Maybe he, I'm just feeling him kind of like drop and like engage. Um, so we ended up like eating some cookies and hanging out on the couch for a little bit longer. And then I ended up showering at the end of the night just to kind of alleviate whatever discomfort I was having. And I thought that would help. Um, so I really only slept from like 10 PM to 12 AM before I woke up and I was experiencing contractions, but I just thought they were just more like intense Braxton Hicks contractions. Cause like my stomach was tightening. Um, I tried to go to sleep and then I eventually woke up again at 1 AM and had to move to the couch. Cause I didn't want to wake up my husband. I was having to kind of start breathing through some of the surges I was experiencing. Um, and then around 4 AM, I went to the bathroom and I had some bloody show. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. No. Okay. So it's basically like, um, bloody discharge and it's like a little mucusy because you lose your mucus plug, which again, I had no idea any of these terms before I get pregnant, yeah. but reading birth stories really helped me. <laughs> um, so I panicked a tiny bit, but I was also still in denial that like anything was <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, but I like, I think I, I think, Oh, I, Mariah, because I was telling her all these things, um, she was kind of like on edge that whole night and was like waiting for me to text her updates. And I think she just, she just knew. Um, so I just showed her a picture and she's like, yeah, no, like <laughs> you're in labor. Um, so I went and woke up my husband and like, let him know what was happening. And 
he, we started timing my contractions at around like 4 45 AM. And at that point we were just kind of like in panic mode. <laughs> we were like, Oh my God, it's happening. He texted, um, he texted all of his friends from work and he was like, it's happening. And he was like, yeah, we're going to go into the hospital this morning. And we started finishing up all these chores around the house. Um, I ended up like working through contractions. Like I was sitting <laughs> on my, I know, I know I'm so bad. I was sitting at my kitchen counter and I was like t- texting with Mariah and I was like updating some stuff. Cause we had something later on that day that needed to get finished. So I was like typing all this stuff up. Um, we were packing the hospital bags. Everything was like, we had everything in one area. They just weren't like actually put into bags. Um, even at 39 weeks pregnant, I'm awful. So, <laughs> um, at this point they had picked up and they were consistent. Um, and they say you have this five, one, one rule. So you're supposed to be having, um, contractions that are five minutes apart, lasting for one minute, uh, lasting for over an hour. So once you start, or once you get to that point, that's when you should head into the hospital. So, um, my contractions were inconsistent, but they were consistent. So they were happening pretty consistently, but they were just like inconsistent as far as like the timings, like they come in waves of like 10 minutes apart and then seven and then eight. And then they go like six minutes, six minutes, six minutes. And we're like, oh my gosh. And the app that I was using was like, get ready to head in. And then 14 minutes, 10 minutes. Like it was just like so weird how they were, um, how they were progressing. And then sometimes they last like a minute and a half. Um, I was, you know, like laboring on the couch, like I'd have the contraction, I'd set the timer and then I would just like bury my head into the couch and like breathe through them and then get through them. And then it was just, I was laboring on a, like a little medicine ball or not a medicine ball, like one of the exercise balls. Like I was just kind of like all over the place. Um, my husband was trying to get me to eat, but I just like, it was like that hungover feeling where you're hungry, but like not hungry and like don't want to eat anything, but you should eat something. So I was kind of like in that stage. Um, and it just went on like that all day. So, so we started timing my contractions at 4 45 in the morning and it was like 6 PM and we were still like not anywhere close to having this five minutes apart. So, um, I will say though, I think that the mental work that I did as far as like really being able to like concentrate on my breathing, trying to accept every contraction and like reminding myself of my goals and reminding myself, like there's no wasted contraction. Um, so even though it was like all day long, like I knew that every single one I experienced was getting me closer and closer to her, our baby, which is still so weird to be saying that because I was still kind of in denial (laughs) thing was happening. Um, And like my husband would come up and like rub my back and like, just make sure I had everything I needed to be comfortable. And finally around like 6 45 PM, we were getting a little bit concerned about our progress or like, again, lack of progress. Um, and potentially even like the health of our baby. Cause we knew that like, you're not supposed to be in labor for too long. And it's like the average. Um, I think we were reading right around like 20 to like 24 hours, I think is what I had read. And one of the reasons why we were like, Hey, we should probably head in. Cause it had been like 18 or 19 hours or something at that point. Um, so we texted my friend who's a nurse and we're like, Hey, like this is what's been going on. And she was like, yeah, I would definitely go into the hospital, just get checked. And she was like, um, it's a long time to be in labor without really progressing towards like getting closer and closer. And she was like, I mean, obviously not worst case scenario, but she was like, um, you know, worst thing that happens is you go in, they say, you know, they check you, you're only at three centimeters or something. They give you an IV and then tell you to go home and come back. So we're like, okay. So we started packing everything up and the hospital is only 15 minutes away. So it was not like a super long car ride or anything like that. Um, but we got into the car and we started driving and we were like maybe 30 seconds out of the neighborhood before I had a contraction and I had to take my seatbelt off and like get on all fours and like breathe through it. Cause I mean, they tell you like the drive there is like pretty bad. And I was like, Oh, why? It's because you can't get comfortable. So just like sitting there upright is like awful. Um, so I had two contractions, um, on the way there. One of them was like halfway 
And then I ended up um, having another contraction in the parking lot before we actually went to get in to check in. Um, so we got to the waiting room. My husband was up there getting us all checked in and I was sitting there on the couch and I was looking directly in front of me and there was a mom and her little boy sitting in front of me. And the little boy was so funny. Like we kept looking at each other and he was like talking to his mom and he like wanted to come up and talk to me, but he was like too shy or something. Um, and then eventually I had a contraction and I had to turn around and just like sit on the chair nice. <laughs> and like, breathe through and like everyone was watching me. So it was a little awkward. Um, but eventually they came in and brought me like a wheelchair <laughs> and like wheeled me up. Um, and we got into the triage area and we had um, our nurse, Sarah, and she was incredible. She was amazing. She was like, and literally an angel. <laughs> and she ended up um, asking if we, she could perform a cervical exam. And I said, okay. And so this was probably right around 8 p.m. And she did the cervical exam and she looked at me and my husband, she goes, well, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I was like, I'm only going to be at like three centimeters dilated. They're going to send us back home. I was like, I can't believe I've labored all this time. She goes, you're nine centimeters dilated and you're going to have a baby in a few hours. We looked at each other. We're like, oh my gosh. So they ended up moving us into our individual room where I continued to labor, but things were still just as consistent as they were at home. So um, my contractions were still intense, but um, they just weren't happening like quicker, which I expected them to come like quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, and again, like I mentioned, our nurse was just an absolute angel. She did everything she could to help get our baby engaged. Um, but uh, so, and then the other thing too, I forgot to mention is that I had printed out my birth plan and I brought that and she was looking over everything. Um, so she knew I wanted like as minimal interventions as possible. So like, I didn't want, um, Pitocin. I didn't want my water to be broken. Like I didn't want, um, anything like that. I wanted everything to just kind of happen naturally. So she was trying to stick to that as best as she could. And so we were trying all these different positions. Um, I labored on the toilet. Um, I was like moving around the room. Um, we were trying just everything she could think of. I had a squat bar, um, but just nothing really helped. And she kept asking me, do you have any instinct to push? And I was like, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> not at all. Um, the other thing that they ask is if you have any, um, uh, like if you have any need to poop, because that also can be what labor kind of feels like. Um, and huh. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have any of that. And so, and then the other thing, um, again, I, before reading all these birth stories, I was like, why are people laboring on the toilet? It didn't make any sense to me, yeah. <laughs> but I get it now because when you're going to the bathroom, like you're releasing your pelvic floor, like you're relaxing your pelvic floor. So sometimes it's like just, a cue, right? Yeah. 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 So it's just like sitting there sometimes it's like your body like, oh, I need to like relax this area. Um, because he was like, his head was still pretty high and engaged. So even though I was nine, nine and a half centimeters dilated, he was still pretty high. Um, so the doctor came in around 1230. Um, so 1230 in the morning. So we had been going for another four hours. Um, and he basically said I needed uh, another cervical exam or I needed an intervention because at, that's, at this point I was at a failure to progress which means that you've been in labor and nothing's really happening. And um, I mean, God, gosh, the, our nurse was just amazing. Like she basically kind of stood up to him um, and I had to stand up to him a little bit too. And I was like, we'll do another cervical exam. We're gonna try a few more positions before we make any other uh, decision. So one thing I will point out that the course that I took kind of helped with was advocating for yourself and like how to, um, like, I guess that, I think the acronym might even be birth. Um, but it's, I have, I have to figure, or maybe it's breathe. Um, I will have to find all this because it was just like, what if you do, um, like nothing at all? What if we wait? Like, what if um, we do something else? Like I'll have to find the acronym because it was just so helpful. Um, so she did the cervical exam and I was at a nine and a half. And while she was doing that, my water broke. So I don't know if it was on accident or if she was just trying to get things to speed along, but it was like basically what happens in the movies. It was like a huge gush. And I was like, wow. oh my God. Um, 
But either way, um, it just kind of helped a tiny bit. She said that she could feel his head, but he was still pretty high and he needed to turn a little bit. So we were trying to labor more on my side to get him to turn. And then it was like 1.30 in the morning. I still had no urge to push. And she just looked at me and she was like, you just need to start pushing. Like, that's the only way he's going to come. So <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, so she started having me like try to grunt with every contraction to try to kind of like use my breath to get him moving. Um, but that didn't seem to work. And then at one point, um, I was on my side and I was pushing and I was pushing, I was pushing. And I was like, is he there? Like, you know, like, is he crowning? Like, you know, cause I feel like you hear all these things like, oh, my baby started to crown and like do all this. And so I was like, is anything happening? Cause I didn't see anything. So she was like, can we get a mirror? <laughs> so she, she pulled a mirror in and I started pushing and it was very helpful to have a mirror, but at the same time, it was almost like incredibly discouraging because I would push, 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 and then like see nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, so I just like, I eventually, like at one point I just, <laughs> this is so bad, but I like threw my head back and I was just like, fuck <laughs> like in the middle of labor and then I at one point I was like pushing so hard and I just like looked over at my husband and I looked at him like just kind of with this like I can't do this um so I felt like I would need like an epidural or something or like a c-section because I was like there's no like how do people do this yeah. like, there's no way um so again, it was like good and bad because I saw like what I was doing was getting like getting me absolutely nowhere. So um, I don't know. I, I don't know how it happened, but I was like pushing. I was making no progress. And then I think what would happen is like I'd start to make a little progress, but I, just the pain was like overwhelming. And I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm just trying to be very, very real, real with my experience. Um, but I started to kind of like hyperventilate a little bit. So like I let my breathing kind of get out of control. So our nurse, Sarah was just like really helpful at like trying to slow my breathing down. And she was very, very reassuring, like you're safe, you're okay. Um, all these things. And so, um, I was still on my side and they were monitoring, um, uh, our baby's heartbeat and it started to drop. So she was like, you need to turn over. We need to push from the other side. Um, and so I switched sides and, um, kept pushing, kept pushing. And she said his heart rate was dropping again. So like we needed to get him out. So I don't know how, but I just bared down and his head came out and then everything just kind of happened so fast after that. So the doctor saw that the cord was wrapped around his neck. So normally what happens is when you have your baby, like his head comes out and then you need to continue pushing. Um, but they didn't do that for me. They just pulled them all out because they were trying to get the cord unwrapped and especially because his heart rate had been dropping. So, um, every, I, like, I didn't know, I don't think I even saw like any of this happen. I think my head was back. I don't even know. But yeah. the next thing I knew he was on my chest, like I heard him crying and I'm going to try really, really, really hard to not cry. Um, if we had done this like two weeks ago, I would have bawled my eyes out. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, so, um, it was just like really overwhelming. My husband was able to cut the cord. Um, so I think I had pushed for maybe like 30 minutes total. Again, I, like my concept of time was a little warped at the, like during delivery, but, um, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. I thought I was definitely going to have to have an epidural or a C-section, um, but somehow he got out. And um, while at the very beginning of this, I talked about having a pain-free birth, um, it was definitely not. Um, <laughs> but I think it went better than maybe it could have if I had had a different mindset. Um, so I ended up having a second degree tear. And originally that was the area I was like most concerned about tearing in. So you can have anywhere from a first to a fourth degree tear. Um, and it's basically the degree to which, um, you tear and like, um, the length and how far into the muscle it tears. Um, but, um, I had two additional tears on my labias and I didn't even know that that was a thing or that you could tear there, yeah, but I would, 
Yeah. Yeah. So again, not trying to scare anyone, <laughs> like and just trying to like, this is kind of the reality. Um, and even after all the birth stories that I read, I had never read anyone tearing there. Um, and that was actually probably the hardest part of my recovery. I think I would have recovered a lot easier had I not had those tears. Um, but it just made things like really, really uncomfortable. Um, I think I talked about this before. I felt like a Western gunslinger, like walking around the house, just like <laughs> kind of like waddling. I kept telling my husband I needed like cowboy spurs and like little like pistols. <laughs> like, that's what I felt like. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was pretty painful, but having like a really good postpartum kit is helpful and I can go into all those things. Um, but, uh, so, so I gave birth naturally. And then afterwards, um, they do like a, I think it's called a fundal massage where they massage your belly and they're trying to get you to deliver your placenta. Um, cause that happens afterwards. And I think it was coming up on like 14 or 16 minutes of him trying to massage this thing out of me and it wasn't <laughs> coming. And originally I had put in my birth plan. I didn't want any, um, I think it's called cord traction or tugging where they basically pull on your placenta to like guide it out. I was trying to birth it naturally, but he goes, um, either I pull it or I have to reach in and get it for you. And I was like, pull it. <laughs> <laughs> So he pulled it out. Um, and then that's when they started with the, um, stitching and that was really, really intense. So they do look a local anesthetic. So they were putting kind of like this numbing cream on me and then that didn't do anything. So they <laughs> asked if I wanted fentanyl in my IV. Um, and I looked at my husband cause I was a little scared. Oh, someone's going to ring the doorbell and my dog is going to bark. So I apologize. Um, but there it is. <laughs> um, it's not that loud. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so they did the, the fentanyl on my IV. Cause I was like, yes, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at the nurse and I remember I was like, how quickly is this going to like go into my system? She's like, as soon as we get it. And he started like stitching me up and I was like, oh my God, please. <laughs> um, so it didn't, I don't know, maybe it did help, but it was still really, really painful and intense to feel like the stitching. Um, but I mean, after that, I think we had, I don't remember how much time we had in that, in that room, but um, they were going to make me walk from the delivery room to our recovery room in the postpartum area. And I looked at her, I was like, you want me to walk? And she's like, yep. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And um, I mean, you know me, I'm, I'm very prone to passing out. So I had gotten a little lightheaded. Um, so they ended up getting me a wheelchair because they didn't want me passing out. Um, so yeah, so they wheeled me to our room. We were in the um, postpartum area and we eventually got a little bit of sleep. And so I will say though, um, even as uncomfortable and as scary as it is, to go to the bathroom to like go pee after delivery, definitely make it a thing. Um, so like a priority. More, yeah. Yeah. I just, I was obviously very comfortable in my bed <laughs> and not having to get up and it feels like, I mean, a really good way to put it is like you, your body feels like it's been in like a car accident or like you just went through this, like I don't know, 24 hour workout with Marissa as your trainer. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. 2000, uh, what 15 Marissa as your trainer. Um, there we go. There we go. But, um, like I, I felt like I couldn't even like reach my arms up. Like my arms are so tired and, um, it's just from like, you know, all the, the pain or not all the pain, but just what your body went through during labor and then delivery. It just, is, it was so intense. Um, but even with all that being said, get up, go to the bathroom, like empty your bladder, because if you don't empty your bladder, it sits on top of your uterus and that puts a lot of pressure on your uterus. Mm -hmm. um, so getting up and walking as much as that just seems like the opposite of what you want to be doing, um, peeing and walking are two of the best things to kind of help with recovery. And I didn't do that. I just didn't know. So at one point I got up and like stood up to go to the bathroom and I thought I was peeing my pants, but it was just all the fluid coming out of me now that I wasn't like sitting up Ugh. and like I had like I passed a huge blood clot um 
it was just, yeah, it was just really intense. And I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> but like our nurses are like, no, you're okay. You just need to go to the bathroom more often. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it's been two, two and a half weeks. Um, I'm recovering extremely well. So like I mentioned at the beginning, um, part of the reason I wanted to have a natural birth is you have less degree of tearing. And I don't know if having them kind of like pull him out of me if that's when I tore or if I tore when his head was coming out um, or if I tore just because I didn't have any natural instinct to push. So things didn't happen as like slow as I probably would have liked, but also like his heart rate was dropping. So there are just so many things I just don't know or if things could have gone better. Um, but I mean, I will say, I feel like I do have, I did have a very quick recovery and I feel like had I been on like drugs and maybe it wouldn't have been as quick. Um, but I mean, other than that, like everyone's good and everyone's healthy and happy. And so I guess that's kind of, that's kind of it. Have you seen Inventing Anna, that new Netflix series? No, but I want to. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Yes. Like the yes. fake, uh, whatever, heiress. Uh -huh. So we watched all of it <laughs> and um, there is one point and this will be a kind of a spoiler. It's not a spoiler to like the plot of like Anna itself, but it's just like in the storyline of the show. Um, there's a point at which like the main reporter character is giving birth and like oh. they show like like she's like you know laboring and like all, all of that stuff right and then they show her like going to the hospital and then when she's delivering and like pushing <laughs> and the whole show the the main character the whole premise is like she wants to get these like articles done about Anna before she goes into delivery right and she mm -hmm. was like the whole thing she's like very just career driven like I related to her because she was like I don't want to have this baby until I'm done with my work right like she's so set on it and so there was like one point in the show where she was like yelling at her husband like that they had a great relationship, but yelling at her husband, like, I only win. I'm not going to lose. I'm going to like do this and blah, 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 <laughs> like whatever. Right. So she's like in the fucking bed and she's like, I can't do this. Like, I just, like you said, like about to give up on like the birth. Yeah. Um, and she was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And her, <laughs> this is the funniest scene ever. I literally like, doubled over laughing. Her husband looks at her and all the, all the like nurses are around, like trying to like help with the delivery. And he looks at her and he goes, you're losing right now you're losing right now. Do you know what that means? You're not going to win. You're not a winner. And she would always tell him like, you know, I'm not special. We're, we're having a baby isn't special. Like people, people squat in fucking fields, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so literally what got her through, like pushing through for her baby was like, he was like, what do people do? She was like, squat in fields. And they were just like <laughs> chanting it as she was giving birth. That's and the doctors so and nurses were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're not special. I'm not special. And, she was just like, <laughs> and I was like oh. thinking of that as you were talking about oh when you were pushing. <laughs> and I was like, people spotted fields. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I did like a, um, like a little, um, oh, shoot, what are those boards called? Um, <laughs> uh like a vision board yeah I made a vision board so I like had all these like phrases on it like your body is like meant to do this like you know I'm strong I, like I imagine like putting like you're a loser like <laughs> <laughs> you're losing people do this all the time people squat and fucking you're not field. special <laughs> <laughs> having a baby isn't special we're not special <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so it was really funny. So I, like, like I'd mentioned, I had labored like pretty much all day at home and I was messaging Mariah at some point. I was like, Hey, is this done? Like, did you do this? Did you do that? <laughs> and like, she's like, yes, yes. And then at one point, um, she had our, um, we had like a, a program. And so we have a training and it was at like 6 PM. And so afterwards I messaged her. So this is like 
I think as we were heading into the hospital, I was like, hey, how'd the training go? Like, I saw so-and-so made it, so-and-so did it. She was just like, oh my God, Christina. She's like, what are you doing? I know, but it was, yeah, but it was really funny. But um, She actually texted me a question about like a client's macros or something. Yeah, And she was like, she was like, I just don't want her to be working right now. And I was like, I was like, yeah, because she'll probably try to if you give her the chance. Yeah. And I would have, I would have. I saw, yeah, I saw the checking came in, but I couldn't get myself to respond to the email email, but I was processing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, he made his arrival at 2.03 AM and he was seven pounds, 2.2 ounces, and he was 19 inches long and little Colton is here now. And it was, I mean, I, I will say from not ever wanting kids or not knowing if I wanted kids, I couldn't imagine my life without him. And it's definitely a very, very different love than I've ever experienced before. So again, like I mentioned, I'm going to try not to cry. I'm trying to say this like, oh, very, like, uh, I don't know, very almost detached because You're not special. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know, 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> even with, uh, even with how intense like labor and delivery were, um, it was so worth it. And so I do remember though, at one point, like right after I immediately turned to my husband and I was like, I'm never fucking doing that again. <laughs> and then like, after being with him a couple days, I was like, well, I mean, maybe two. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's a, yeah. yeah. It's like the, the mental shift, like, and probably like hormonal and like physiological connection that I'm just like, mm. Maybe I'll know it when I know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's crazy. Like they talk about, um, I think basically the flood of emotions that you experience postpartum, like part of it is for that reason. It's so you attach with your baby, like right away yeah. and you have that like maternal instinct and all of that is just like turned on. So, I mean, it's all biologically driven, right? Like to yeah. have your baby like survive and you take care of it. Um, so yeah, I would say the, the past, like two, two and a half weeks, I probably the most I've ever cried ever. Um, but it's like nine out of 10 times have been happy tears. Um, I mean, having a newborn is very tough at some points. And what has really been hard for me is again, cause you and I are so different or so similar. I like pride myself on being very strong and very like unemotional at some points and, being able to just like do things and like think of things very logically. But I was like giving, we were like trying to give him a bath and you can't give them a bath when they still have their umbilical cord um, attached. So you have to do this like sponge bath. So we're like wiping him down and he fucking hated it. <laughs> he was just like <laughs> screaming bloody murder. And I was like trying to just like take like cotton balls over his like eyes and I like couldn't do it. And he was screaming. I was like, oh my God, I'm a bad mom. <laughs> he started like bawling and my husband was like, move. <laughs> he just starts doing it. And I just, and it's like funny because it's like, it's just a bath, right? Like I know he's not going to like it. And, but it needs to be done. We're not doing anything to like hurt him. Yeah. But like me, logically, I'm like, oh no, I'm hurting my baby. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so it's just, it's just been like really, really weird and things have gotten a little bit easier, but those first two weeks, whew, like, yeah, they yeah. were tough. Have you seen that? Um, I don't know if you sent me the reel, but it was like a reel of this mom. And it was like, when your first kid, was, was that you? I don't know, like but bath. I've seen all of them. So she like has this toy, like plastic baby doll. Right. And it's like first kid. And she's like prepping up her like sponges and like, she's getting ready to give the baby a bath, like gentle, gentle, gentle. And then it's like second baby. And she just kind of like pours the water on him <laughs> and like kind of just rubs it. Right. Third baby is like, and it's like third baby, like throws it into the sink. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah. so I've seen a bunch of those. They're really funny. Like one of them will be like, um, you know, their first baby and they walk in their binky drops on the floor. So they go and like wash it, scrub it down, sanitize it. And then the second one, it's like, they drop the binky and they just like run it underwater. And the third one, they're like, just like blow it off and give it back to the kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I could see the escalation being like fourth kid, like rub some dirt on it some more. Like, here you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I think uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about um, is so it's not just all about me, but 
Um, if you are someone who is pregnant or you're in that postpartum stage, we really wanted to focus kind of, or like tell you like, Hey, this is what you should be focusing on. Like it is not the time to diet. It is not the time to reduce your calories. If you are breastfeeding or if you're pumping, you need about an additional 500 calories. Um, and you should not be picking yourself apart, like obsessing over your body. I know it's really difficult because you're like, great, I'm not pregnant anymore. Like I shouldn't look pregnant, but you do. <laughs> um, or like most, I would say like a big majority of women still look pregnant. Your uterus is still shrinking. It's still contracting um, and getting back down to its original size. And that doesn't happen overnight as much as we think. Um, but you probably still have a little bit of um, a tummy. You still have inflammation, bloating that took maybe like a week for my feet to, to go back down. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so this is not the time to be assessing over the scale, obsessing of your body and, you know, trying to beat yourself up and get back into the gym right away. So most women are not going to be cleared for exercise until at least six uh, weeks, maybe four weeks if you're cleared early, but usually it's six. So you shouldn't be trying to like get back to the gym. I had some clients like, can I just do band work? Can I do this? Like your main focus should just be on bonding with your baby and making sure you are healing and recovery, you're resting, um, you know, you're nourishing yourself and you are just showing yourself some grace. So you just delivered a baby. Like that's really difficult, whatever way that you delivered, however you did. Um, and I think it's important too, to kind of say like, you know, postpartum looks different for everyone. Um, and you know, your hormones, like I just mentioned, like are all out of whack. Like you might be like really upset, really happy, all these things, but being able to like give yourself grace and show yourself kindness and really focus on recovery is going to help you so much more than trying to just like get into that bounce back culture. And you're going to do a lot more good for your body than like trying to jump on a low calorie diet or do all this intense exercise. So, um, I, I do feel like, and I, I definitely understand because, we were getting ready for our, um, you know, was it like three or four day follow-up or something like that? And I was trying to pick out clothes and I was like, what the heck? Like I still look pregnant. And I got like a little frustrated that I couldn't fit in any of my clothing, even though I'm, like, I'm not pregnant anymore. So I do understand that. Um, but I would say that like, that's pretty normal to experience. Um, but to still try to show yourself as much grace as possible and really focus on like that bonding between your baby because they, I mean, it's funny. I only have a two week old, but they, they do grow up so fast. And like, I keep saying to my husband, I'm like, we have an old man living in our house now. <laughs> it's like, he just looks even so different just from two weeks. Um, but yeah, so that would be my little, little, I guess, thing to say. Yeah. Well, like also, you know, for maybe, I don't know, people who haven't had a kid or maybe people who are like farther removed from it kind of think about the same way that you would think about expectations with like weight loss. It's like one of the realizations that a lot of people come to when they like finally start their journey and do things the right way. And maybe their results are a little bit slower than the last time they did a fat diet is like, oh yeah, well, I didn't gain all this weight overnight. So like, it's not going to it's not going to all go away overnight. And then what you said about like your uterus shrinking and like things coming back down to normal size, like you literally just took nine months to, to grow and expand and do all this. So like, how could we possibly expect that? Like, Oh, second day after I uh, deliver my baby back to normal, like absolutely not. Right. And so like, it's, it's just natural to expect like the stuff's going to take time. And, um, especially from like the physiological side of things and the physical side of things, like, especially when you said, you know, four to six weeks, like four being like the absolute minimum of like, maybe you prepped really, 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 really well, like exercise wise, pelvic floor wise, maybe you didn't have any complications, easy delivery. That's like best, best case scenario. Right. But like you really are putting your body at risk for more long-term negative effects, whether that's like not fully healing, um, internally, um, or like just having complications down the road by rushing that process. And like, I've been, um, coaching people in that position where it's like either, you know, you kind of work with someone, um, either through pregnancy or like for a lot of people, they're like, I want to coach immediately after. Right. So it's like, once we're at that 
four to six week mark, I can start working with a coach and I can start doing this thing. Right. Like, un- unfortunately, but fortunately I've had people in that mindset. And like I say, unfortunately, but fortunately, because like now I'm in the position where I can like coach them on their mindset around that. But also it's like the motivation is purely stemming from, I need to bounce back as fast as possible. So um, just like really trying to educate without being like, without like talking down to someone, right? Cause like, especially me, I've never gone through this. Like, so how am I supposed to even know what the fuck to say? But at the same time, it's like, I have the knowledge now of like, we know what takes time to recover. We know why these are guidelines and just like really encouraging you guys, if you are a new mom or you're planning on getting pregnant or you are, you know, in those stages just to like, for the, for the long-term, right? Cause everything we talk about is like, we do these things now for our long-term health and for our sustainability. It's the same thing here. We need to spend that time resting in those first, that first month, month and a half of just making sure that we're actually in a good position moving forward to be able to then like, you know, if you want to say, get back to your pre-pregnancy body or get in the best shape ever, you can, you have a higher likelihood of doing that if you take the time to rest at the beginning. Yeah. And I think that's really, really important to, to kind of point out that you can make things worse by trying to do things too soon or to push yourself too soon. So that's I really like sentence to literally sum up my whole rant. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but it, it is a lot of it is mindset. Like it's not just the, the physical side of things. So even when you are cleared, it's not like, Oh, great. Now I can join CrossFit and <laughs> oh my God. This, like, really intense stuff. Like those first like seven to nine weeks. And, and actually I would say seven to 12 weeks postpartum, like your goal is still resting and recovery. Like you should be resting as much as possible throughout the day. Like you should have, again, and it all depends on what your doctor tells you, but as a very, very, very general kind of recommendation, like you should be doing no more than 45 minutes of like light, super easy pace of walking at, you know, as much as your energy level and like schedule permits, like two to three, maybe like full body sessions per week. Um, and your goal is still resting recovery. Like you want to try to maintain good breathing patterns, um, have a good core and like pelvic floor coordination. And you're incorporating like more challenging strength training exercises as you continue to progress. But your goal is to move through like all the different major movement patterns, um, like over the course of a week and somewhat like in somewhat of a challenging, um, way, but again, still making sure that you're not doing anything super crazy as far as like volume. Um, you still want to make sure that you're incorporating the connection breath while you're moving through the exercises and you don't want your like load and volume to be very high. You actually want it to be relatively low and like somewhat moderate. And it's just mostly about like easing your way back into training more than anything. So like, um, you just like, you should almost still be able to go through your workout, still feeling like you could do more. You still have like a few more reps in you. You just don't really want to be pushing the intensity. So it's more just kind of like getting back into the swing of things, which is like frustrating because it's like you've waited for however many, you know, if you were on bed rest or, um, you know, if you had a C-section or however long your recovery is, it's like, ah, yes, I'm back into the gym and you want to go really hard, but you're still slowly easing your way back into it. But, um, I mean, movement is still really good as far as your recovery and you don't want to just sit there and do absolutely nothing. Um, so it is kind of like trying to find that nice balance between, getting back into it and pushing yourself a little bit, but not pushing yourself too hard. Yeah. I think, um, kind of just to break down that timeline a little bit more too, like, um, at least guidelines for postpartum exercise that we've gotten from like our certifications and now your experience, Christina, but like zero to six weeks, like that weird time frame where you're not cleared yet, but you're just like, you know, resting and recovering. This is the time where you can work on your breathing. This is where you can yeah. work on your connection with your pelvic floor. So when you say connection breath, Christina, just to define that for people, it's being able to like contract and relax your pelvic floor, like at will and like doing that consciously kind of like mind muscle connection with any muscle, having that connection with your pelvic floor, because obviously, 
uh, after birth, you could be like really tense and tight there. You could be overly relaxed there. So retraining your pelvic floor postpartum with just breathing is really, really helpful. And then body weight movements, um, not like saying like do a bunch of air squats, no, but like the movements of your daily life, like you are still probably going to bend over and put dishes in the dishwasher. You're probably going to, you know, put some baskets up overhead on the shelf, right? So like movements of daily life, like you're not going to get away from those things. So that's not to say like do um, a bunch of different like uh, movements with with like weights that, that mimic that you shouldn't do that, but like, you're going to do activities of daily life, but just like practice doing those things as you do them with like good form. Right. So if you're going to squat down to go get something, use good form, you know, brace your core and like breathe through it. And so like, you can use those things as opportunities as like your first stepping stone to like getting back to training. And you can also like, especially like week two, three, four, five, six, like as you get like farther and farther away from actually delivering like really light, gentle, short walks is good too. Um, and just like, you know, again, breathing exercises, I can't overemphasize that. And then when you get into that, like three or six to 12 week mark, it's like, let's start doing some body weight movements, maybe some glute bridges. And it, you know, it seems rudimentary for some, right? We have an audience of people, a mixed audience of people who strength train really hard and people who are maybe brand new to it, but, and, and it, I'm sure it will scale based on your experience level. But again, your body just went through something so traumatic and it, like just overall very taxing. So there's never a step too small with this. And it's better to kind of do a little bit too little than overexert and do too much. Um, so definitely just kind of wanted to break down that timeline beyond 12 weeks. That's when we get into like, okay, we're lifting or progressing slowly, slowly, yeah. slowly. Yeah. I love that. Even if you don't feel like you're doing a whole lot in the gym, the connection breathing is so important. And it may like, they even talk about during pregnancy, like you can do that. And that might be a workout like in and of itself. So I think that's really important. And I think that's a really good kind of like summary and like ending point where it's like, you should probably err on the side of caution and do too little <laughs> rather than doing too much. Yeah. Way more, way better risk to benefit ratio. Yeah, exactly. Well, do we have anything else? I mean, if, if we have a, a lot of people that want us to do like a more in-depth postpartum yeah. episode, we definitely can do that. If we want to like break down, like kind of like week by week, we could do that. Yeah. Um, I have one question for you. Yeah. Was this the most pain you've ever experienced in your life? Yes. Like how much more painful than everything else that has been painful? I have never even like, I've never broken a bone. Like I've never, <laughs> Me neither. Done, yeah, I've never done anything. I, when I told my mom, I wanted to deliver naturally. She's like, what's, she was like, uh, okay. And she's like, what's the most painful thing you've ever experienced? And I was like, uh, oh, I've twisted no. my ankle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I stubbed my pinky toe real bad one time. <laughs> like, oh my god! I had I had nothing to compare it to. So yeah, that was it. Was yeah, it was really yeah. intense. Maybe I need to go yeah. break a bone first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was it was really intense, but it was like it's over quickly at the same time. Yeah. So you kind of just got to get get in the mindset. I feel like of just like just go, just do it. Like, just give it You're your all. Special. Over with. You're not special. <laughs> yeah. I think. And so again, my husband and I are, again, we're so similar. Like we were like, we almost like debriefed birth and we're like, what could we have done better? <laughs> like, it's just, that's just our personality. But I think if maybe had I gotten up and moved around a little bit more with labor, I might've been able to speed things up. Um, but I think it was just kind of, it was like all day. So I was like kind of sitting, I was like trying to relax and like, just like kind of let things happen. But if I had moved a little bit better, maybe that would have helped. Um, and then also like our nurse just, so my nurse just said that that might've just been like how my body responded to labor. So there was maybe nothing I could have done about it. Some people are just kind of unique and individual and how their bodies work. So she said that maybe I couldn't have, or I don't know, couldn't have gotten them closer together. 
Um, but I think that had I had a natural urge to push, I think that would have helped a little bit because I've literally heard of women feeling like their babies just literally fell out of them. <laughs> like, that would be that's nice. How they, yeah, yeah, that's how they describe things. So I don't know if you follow um is it M- Misha Dawn. She's like the ADO coach. Mm-hmm. No, she's pretty um she used to be married to Brandon was it Foken? No, you have no idea who I'm talking about. Nope. <laughs> um, but she said that she like labored at home. She like walked into her birthing center and basically just like was like, I need to push. And her nurses were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and she started pushing and the baby just like came out of her. Oh my God. I yeah. like would hope for that in my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's what I expected to happen, but <laughs> I I kept, and again, this is, this is part of why maybe sometimes having expectations can be bad, but at the same time, I think that reading through all the birth stories helped me learn how to like advocate for myself, learn what can happen. Also learn that like, you can have a birth plan and it can all go to shit. Um, and you know, you can have a birth plan and things go a hundred percent how you want them to go. Um, but it just helped me with, like learning about things throughout labor, but that a lot of times what doctors will do is they're like, oh, okay, you're at 10 centimeters, like kind of push. And even though your body has like no urge to, and then I've also seen the opposite side of things where women are like, he's like, my baby's coming. Like I need to push. And then nurses being like, no, don't, because we don't have a doctor yet. (laughs) So like keeping, like having you like keep it inside. So like, it's just like literally wild what can happen. So Wow. Yeah. So I think if I, I, I'm, I think that if I had had a natural urge, I think things would have gone a little bit better, but I don't know for certain. That's just me. Like, I don't know. Thinking. Hypothesizing. Yeah. Hypothesizing. That was the word I was looking for. Nice. Well, I learned a lot today. I know me and, uh, and, um, Shane, we're always like going back and forth and we're like, yeah, we're really, really selling a uh, motherhood for you, huh? <laughs> oh my God. Like our, our podcast group chat is what she's talking about. So our podcast editor and then her will like, cause he just had a baby as well. They're just going. And I'm like reading this, like, okay. I, uh, that's just, a, that's pushed, a thing. just push that back by three years. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, thanks for sharing. I'm glad that um, we did this episode. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm hoping it, it's helpful for someone else. And like I mentioned before, if you have any questions or concerns, whether it's pregnancy, postpartum, labor and delivery, uh, whatever it might be, I'm an open book and I'm more than happy to to help or talk through anything. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so let us guys know if you uh, want a more in-depth postpartum episode we can definitely do that we still need to do our pregnancy ones too yeah uh, whether i can't remember if we decided training and nutrition or if we're we going to break it up during trimesters um but we I heard a couple that. people say do it by trimester okay so, thinking about yeah. that yeah let's do that then i think that'd be helpful that's what i looked for too when i was first pregnant so yeah okay cool we'll well Well, guys, we hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You can find both of us on Instagram. You can find me at Christy Lynn Fit. Marissa is at Marissa Roy Fitness. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we hope to see you back next week.